Dr. Das, are you here? Yeah. I'm yeah. there, I'm there. Okay, okay. Yeah, so now we have a topic, uh, surgical procedures, definitions, the basic principles of surgical procedures. How do you choose a particular surgical procedure? Uh, professor Dash, who is a professor at All India Institute, Department of Sur uh, GI Surgery, he'll be talking about the surgical procedures, their definitions. Dr. Dash, please. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Deepak. Thank you, sir. And, uh, I think I will be almost repeating in a different manner what Dr. Sujay has already mentioned, the principles. Uh, the surgeries for ulcerative colitis has been... No, you can in shift the to the full screen. Sorry. You can just shift to the full screen. It's still showing the small screen. Uh, the, the, the surgery yeah, is... Uh, I saw in the literature the surgeries for ulcerative colitis have been written as simple surgeries. So, uh, and uh, these are quite... I think described long, long back, there is very little modification in their definitions. I am supposed to discuss about the definitions and details of the surgery and, uh, and tricks and trades will be, uh, I think, uh, will be uh, discussed tomorrow, it seems. Uh, the basic idea behind treatment of ulcerative colitis is to take out the diseased colon and the rectum and that would possibly be curative for the patient. Uh, so far as the bowel disease is concerned. So the goal of the surgery is to remove the disease with without any without any alteration of the function or lifestyle. So the factors which uh, are to be considered before uh, taking a decision on the surgery are, I think uh, most of them have been discussed by Dr. Sujay. The indication of surgery emergency or uh, complications or the, the routine uh, what was the indication of the surgery? Age, in elderly age, uh, obviously, uh, we don't prefer a pouch in some of the patients. For example, I'm just citing the examples, the comorbidities, the people who are bedridden, the decision is different. Uh, if the patient is obese, uh, morbidly obese, the decision is different. If there is presence of malignancy, the extent of resection changes. And uh, a very important point is the anal sphincter function. If it is intact, uh, the, the surgical decision is different and if it is not intact, it, it changes. So it's about in 90-95% cases it doesn't change and the anal sphincter is intact in 5-10% to cases. It is not, uh, the, it's not continent. So uh, we have to change the strategy. Biologicals, there are now enough studies uh, bearing one or two which says that in ulcerative colitis, if you are going for surgery, wait for some time before the biologicals have stopped. But most of the studies now say that they do not have any effect on the result or decision making in the surgery. And uh, uh, the guidelines say that if the biologicals dose is uh, has come down to 20%, then you can go ahead with surgery for ulcerative colitis. So since all these surgeries are associated with lots of changes in function, lifestyle, complications, equally, and uh, the patient is mentally, uh, possibly they has no idea about what is going to happen. It's very important that you discuss all these things extensively, preoperatively, uh, and counsel the patient and be ready, uh, make him ready to face the uh, sequelae and the functional aspects, and maybe discuss uh, some of the procedures uh, he would like to change because of his uh, likings or preferences. Uh, there, in two settings, we operate on these patients. One is an emergency setting, another is a uh, um, uh, elective setting. And in emergency setting indications, Dr. Sujay has said, the minimum that we can do in these patients is just take out a loop ileostomy, which is very, very rare. This is done when the there is very severe disease, patient is toxic and possibly cannot tolerate long anesthesia, long time uh, for a long period of anesthesia. So a loop ileostomy, earlier on uh, blow hole ileostomy by putting a tube into the ileum or the sicostomy that those are described, they're obsolete now. Uh, in my career, I have seen only two cases of loop ileostomy being done in these uh, circumstances and uh, fortunately both of them really recovered from the toxic state. 
so that is to mention one in most of the cases uh, of course we do a abdominal colectomy and leave behind the rectum uh, but if the patient is not fit for a restorative uh, uh, procedure means restoration of the continuity or restoration of the continency uh, then it is better to like very elderly person uh, or bedridden person comorbidities like that then it's better to go ahead with a uh, proctocolectomy means removal of the colon removal of the rectum and uh, and do a permanent brooks ileostomy the brooks ileostomy by definition is a end ileostomy that has been matured actually the loop ileostomy doesn't uh, come under brooks ileostomy but somehow it has been interchangeably mentioned uh, it is a incontinent uh, stoma of course and if uh, we need a continent stoma we can attempt for that by doing a abdominal colectomy uh, the proctocolectomy and go for a continent stoma but not in emergency setting i'll tell in the elective setting majority of the cases over 90 to 95 percent cases uh, we go for abdominal colectomy be it minimally invasive or open it could be a total colectomy wherein we divide the rectum just at the sacral promontory or it could be a subtotal colectomy wherein some part of the sigmoid colon is left behind. Now the idea is if you are doing a, a total colectomy then the rectal stump has to be left inside the peritoneal cavity and uh, the best way to uh, tackle this rectal, rectal stump is uh, a staple division using a green color staple white white mouth one white pins and then uh, the literature says that you should cover them with the second layer of sutures maybe with proline and uh, if we are leaving behind the rectal stump we must put a drain uh, to drain the pent up secretions or uh, uh, bleeding small some amount of small amount of bleeding that will be occurring after that now, the, the second picture shows how a stump is being left behind and a tube has been put, put inside it. We can irrigate the tube with uh, uh, steroidal solutions in the post-operative period if it is very, very uh, severe uh, rectal disease. Now, what I used to do is before dividing the rectum, I make a hole in the sigmoid colon and then irrigate the stump and do is uh, do a uh, suction and cleaning of the stump and then distally divide with, with the stapler and close it and also under guidance i can put a tube well into the rectum so this is a uh, uh, usually a, a 30 34 to 40 size mellicose catheter is put you can put a foley catheter also the second thing which the western people usually uh, i found they would be uh, preferring there are literatures for that to support also that you keep a part of the sigmoid colon along with the rectum and then bring the sigmoid colon uh, just beneath the wall make a hole make a make an opening in the aponeurosis retract the muscles and keep the stump just below the skin and then close the fascia around the stump the uh, the there are meta two metal analysis at least to say that the chance of pelvic peritonitis is double with rectal stump than uh, the sigmoid uh, uh, sigmoid stomies or sigmoid dopes but the chance of wound recurrent uh, wound infection is much more with the sigmoid uh, group than the rectal group uh, but if you put it just below the skin even if it blows out or opens up you are just to need uh, need to cut the skin a little bit and drain the uh, sigmoid the, the colon or the rectum through a tube uh the the least thing that uh is being uh, uh advocated now which i was i was uh, experiencing when i was doing my residency is to take out the sigmoid colon uh, uh with uh, like a mucous fistula either through the lower part of the wound or to one of the sides and uh, uh, then mature them but the problem with this is uh, high rate of wound infection number one number two this goes on discharging mucus like feces and sometimes they have to put two bags and its quality of life is not good with this 
so uh, either of these two we can do and uh, when we will be doing a subtotal colectomy as dr kapoor said that we have to do a core colectomy now 5 cm of the ileum terminal ileum has to be with the colon because uh, the the ileostomy which we are doing or we are doing the pouch the idea is to prevent uh, to uh, exclude the backwards ileitis that is occurring into the terminal ileum this is not a proven fact but this is what is advocated by many people so uh, uh, the the terminal ileum and then we stay very close if we stay with, uh, inside the arcade then there is a chance of injury to the colon you just stay outside the arcade and then uh, go on dividing the vessels the idea is to keep the mesentery intact during the second procedure because if you make a pouch then the mesentery has to be supple and should be able to uh, should be stretchable so if there will be fibrosis then it will be difficult to bring the pouch down downwards and then uh, while we will be removing the rectum we have to stay in between the sphincters in an intersphincteric plane and then with a very small skin incision uh, we have to complete the surgery and then uh, after this we do a uh, temporary brooks ileostomy complete the procedure the elective procedures can be undertaken uh, by open method or minimally invasive surgery that uh, includes a single port uh, surgery laparoscopic surgery or robotic surgery the only difference between all these three now is the inherent properties of the laparoscopic surgery uh, that are the advantages the leaks the all others are subject of debate now uh, there are uh, these uh, the five six types of procedure the mainly i am mentioning these five the definition of which i will be uh, talking now one is removal of the rectum colon in toto and do a end ileostomy one is a proctocolectomy and a continent ileostomy the earlier one was incontinent then there is abdominal colectomy with ileorectal anastomosis and there is a restorative proctocolectomy either you do it in two two stages three stages or modified to uh, second stage so this is of course it's uh, mo uh, mostly done all throughout the world now 90 to 95% of cases and this is a recent technique described since 2019 rather to do a restorative proctocolectomy and uh, do a pouch anal anal anastomosis through the transanal loop transanal uh, excision of the rectum and do a transanal pouch anal anastomosis uh proctocolectomy and end uh ileostomy uh, i have already described for the uh, emergency procedures important steps are uh, the stoma sighting is very important and avoid autonomic nerves by staying very close to the rectum uh, we can go through the mesorectum it will be a little bit bloody but you can do a proper hemostasis better go through the mesorectum and do a intersphincteric dissection with a very small skin skin excision from outside and uh, meta analysis shows that it has the least quality of life score proctocolectomy and end ileostomy among the uh, four procedures that are described for elective setting then if uh, we need if you can do a, a continent ileostomy then we have to do a cox pouch uh i have never done neither i have seen actually very honestly it is difficult to make and uh, if at all we can make it then we have to use 45 cm of uh, terminal ileum make 30 cm of fit a reservoir or a pouch 10 cm of nipple uh, this will be the nipple and 5 cm outlet and uh, this is a continent uh, uh, pouch you have to empty it two to four times a day by putting a tube and here the external appliance is not needed it is uh, being practiced uh, by specialized centers the problem is difficult to make and if, and uh, there are lots of complications associated and uh, the revision there is a very high chance of uh, revising the thing in the post operative period uh the quality of life has been studied this is definitely better than the uh, incontinent one 
and uh, in some study it, it, it has been shown to be better than the ileal pouch anastomosis uh, procedure also now uh, the abdominal colectomy and ileorectal anastomosis can be done in a single stage uh, in a quiescent phase of the uh, ulcerative colitis uh, period. Uh, the, the, this is done in patients who are unwilling for stoma or pouch, mostly elderly people and uh, having osteo severe oste osteoarthritis, bony problems. And the persons who are having indeterminate colitis, they, this, this is a condition where we cannot differentiate it differentiate between Crohn's and ulcerative colitis and if we what is recommended is uh, you, you uh, just do a uh, iliorectal uh, anastomosis and then uh, see in the post-operative period when the disease uh, calms down repeat biopsy can may be able to show whether what type of colitis was that and as Dr. Sujay said in younger uh, people younger ladies uh, where fecundity is a matter of concern there we can try before their marriage maybe uh, to do a abdominal colectomy and ileorectal anastomosis for preservation of the nerves. Uh, here the rectum is transected at the level of the sacral promontory and is never mobilized because if you mobilize the rectum at that point of time, next time the pelvis will be frozen, you won't be able to do a pouch. The problems are, of course, high frequency, high risk of sepsis, and there's a definite risk of malignancy uh, in about 5 to 10 to 20 percent of cases. Now, that brings us to the most commonly practiced and popular choice scientifically also, the restorative proctocolectomy. The name restorative proctocolectomy, actually, uh, I couldn't find exactly why it is called uh, that, anyone defining that one, but uh, the uh, what I gathered is it restores the continuity of the bowel and it restores the uh, sphincteric function. So it is uh, done in three uh, three different ways. The most common and traditional being the three stage procedure, and uh, it has it, its own indications, as Dr. Sujay said. If we are opting that one, then uh, uh, the then we have to do a subtotal colectomy and leave behind the rectum at the first step and in second stage after three months remove remove the rectum and then make a pouch out of 30 centimeter of the terminal ileum and join the pouch to the anus near the dental line either by hand-seen method or by staple method the difference between hand-seen and staple method is that in hand-seen you can do a little bit of mucosectomy and directly really under vision join the pouch to the dentate line uh, without any left left over mucosa intervening but in a staple ileal pouch channel anastomosis there is a chance that a centimeter ring of mucosa you are leaving behind there uh, which is prone to uh, cause cophitis or pouchitis again these are not proved these are all uh, uh, speculations and then we have to do it uh, 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 a temporary loop ileostomy uh, to complete the procedure and the loop ileostomy is closed after an, uh, another three months in a traditional two-stage uh, restorative proctocolectomy we do a total proctocolectomy and a ileal pouch anastomosis and a temporary loop ileostomy in the first stage. This is where the disease is quiescent and there is no uh, emergency procedure done in this patient. And then after three months, we do a ileostomy closure. And uh, there is this uh, recently uh, published articles on modified two-stage restorative proctocolectomy, wherein the first step is subtotal colectomy and temporary loop ileostomy. And then after three months, do a proctectomy or removal of the rectum with ileal pouch anastomosis and no uh, uh, temporary loop ileostomy. There has been comparative studies between second stage versus modified second stage and it is said that the quality of life, the, uh, the leakage rate, all these are better in comparison to the uh, uh, tip, uh, traditional second stage. 
in adult patients with ulcerative colitis. This is not same in pediatric group of patients. Uh, we can do an ideal pouch distal rectal anastomosis that is two centimeter above the dentate line. Uh, some people have done it and uh, I think uh, uh, if I have seen some of the inexperienced people at the starting point of their uh, career, uh, they, uh, they actually tend to do it inadvertently uh, while doing a pouch anal anastomosis because the problem is um, the the contour of the, st the stapler which divides the rectum. It's very difficult to reach the lower, lower most level. It needs a, a little bit technical of, uh, expertise to mobilize the rectum, particularly anteriorly from the bladder and the seminal vesicles and the prostate to get a proper um, uh, firing of the stapler near as as near to the diet as possible. And uh, recently, uh, sir, uh, in 2019, this procedure was actually published and uh, now getting popularity where this is a trans anal ileal pouch anal anastomosis wherein the rectum is uh, dissected out uh, the trans anally under laparoscopic vision. And then through the ileostomy wound in the abdomen, the bowel is delivered and the pouch is made. And uh, guidance through it, uh, drain is drain tube. This can be guided, guided down to the anus and do a stapled uh, ileal pouch anal anastomosis. There are certain uh, special circumstances in which we need to modify the procedures or uh, remember what not to do. Uh, one of them is inter indeterminate colitis, uh, where I said the, the, the difference between Crohn's and uh, ulcerative colitis couldn't be made. So do a initial Hartman's procedure. Now, defining a Hartman's procedure, Hartman's procedure is actually a sigmoid, sigmoidectomy and closure of the rectum and leaving, leaving behind it. But uh, people used to interchangeably use this one for any form of colon dissection and leaving the rectum uh, behind or even a part of the sigmoid colon behind. So it's a initial Hartman's procedure and later uh, uh, wait for the disease process to cool down and do biopsy and see for differentiation. In case of primary sclerosing cholangitis, it is advised to ad avoid ileostomy because later on they would uh, have cirrhosis, portal hypertension, and there will be development of varices and bleeding around the ileostomy. Uh, if there is a colon or rectal carcinoma, so what is uh, recommended is if it is limited to uh, the upper third, then uh, and in early stage, go for a you can go for a ileal pouch anal anastomosis. And if it is middle or lower, the guideline says that you should not do ileal pouch anastomosis. But 2022-2023 articles have shown that you can even in middle third also, you can if you're getting a good margin, then you can still go for a ileal pouch anal anastomosis. Now the, uh, lastly, a word about appendectomy only. Uh, this is a very, very uh, interesting subject. There is a patient uh, trial to say that. Uh, in ulcerative colitis patients who are not in emergency and they are on drugs, if you do a appendectomy in these patients, the uh, response to the drug becomes better, and the recovery of this uh, 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 of these patients uh, becomes better. Now, this is again under study because the uh, the, the follow up of these patients are yet to come. So whether or not the appendectomy only will be able to help or not, if I go by the trial, it looks quite promising. So summarizing, there are four types of procedure commonly performed for uh, ulcerative colitis. All of them involve resection of the colon with or without rectum. Uh, the ileal pouch anal anastomosis and ileorectal an anastomosis, they restore the continuity. That means two procedures restore continuity. And in one procedure, we uh, do ileostomy after total proctoclectomy. If we need to do a continent ileostomy, go for a Cox pouch. And compared to open, milliband invasive surgery offers short-term benefits. 
the newer technique that is transanal uh, ileal power channel anastomosis has comparable outcomes shown in small studies and in the emergency uh, we we the preferred uh, preferred surgery is total abdominal colectomy ileostomy is the procedure of choice in elective setting most patients should undergo restorative proctocolectomy ileal power channel anastomosis other procedures are rarely used in specific circumstances thank you yeah deepak thank you thank you dr das i think you wonderfully explained all the details and all the specific uh, instances where there are variations in the surgical technique i think uh, we've covered majority i just would like to stress a few points which i think you've already made one is pre operative counseling i think for a ulcerative colitis patient going in for surgery pre operative counseling is one of the very important aspect of the treatment because you have to sit with the family explain to them uh, all the pros and cons of the surgical treatment so that's a very important point which should uh, be done with great detail and other things i think uh, a sphincter tone is very important you should always examine the patient pre operatively uh, properly in fact uh, nl manometry today is said as Uh, regularly you should be doing an manometry there is a facility available before you go in for these procedures because uh, the outcomes and the post operative morbidity number of stools and other things all depend a lot on the anal sphincter uh, uh, function basically i think majority of the things have been covered any other points by any other faculty or any other students please Yeah, so I have two or three questions on behalf of the students. Uh, both uh, Das and uh, Sujoy can uh, take them. One is when you are dissecting the rectum, which plane do you go in? The mesorectal plane, as we do in rectal cancer, or you stay on the rectal wall and leave the mesorectal fat behind? What are the pros and cons? In case of ulcerative colitis, not not malignancy. Uh, when we are going through the recommended, the guideline says that you should go. trans mesorectal through the mesorectum so what uh, uh, we do is in first stage when you do a subtotal colectomy and uh, leaving behind the stump inside we attach a big uh, big size proline suture for identification because identification in these people are difficult so once you uh, catch hold of the uh, the proline and lift it up then you can see uh, the a fold close to the rectum on either side open the fold of the peritoneum on either side first not behind and once you open the fold you can see thick mesorectum behind the rectum so initially i would suggest if you are not uh, you are experienced then better to start dissecting close as close to the rectum because at the promontory itself the superior uh, inferior hypogastric plexus is they deep inside and uh, remain close to the rectum that is where you have to go inside the mesorectum and leave behind the fat uh, the surrounding fat but it is quite bloody procedure yeah yeah so that was the, the reason i asked that if you are going through the mesorectum or between the mesorectum and the rectal wall then you are going to have little more bleeding isn't it yes on the other hand people who go outside the mesorectum in the mesorectal plane as we do in the rectal cancer they say that it will be bloodless number 1 and number 2 you will have more space for the pouch to come down especially in a narrow male pelvis yeah can i come in sir yes sir yeah, please uh, most of the uh, surgeons who are adept at uh, doing the minimally invasive uh, restorative proctectomy yeah, yeah. uh, proctect they would actually like to adhere to the principles of oncological surgery while they are dissecting the rectum because they feel it makes it much easier laparoscopically uh, using the uh, vision is also good and they, they are able to see the nerves anyway so they are going to prevent injuring it at the same time use the plane which is relatively bloodless so that is one difference between how we do it in the open and how uh, the minimally invasive technique has evolved i agree on that actually the planes are much more easier when you do it with a minimal access technique and we prefer to go in the same planes which we are used to dissecting while we are doing uh, malignancy surgery and uh, it uh, it is much more neater procedure because 
going through the mesorectum is uh, a very bloody procedure which in open probably you can probably manage but uh, laparoscopically it may become much more uh, uh, messy the second uh, sir, oh, uh, uh, that is uh, uh, that is perfectly fine but in malignancy we are not so much worried about the nerve injuries and when you go from the sides ultimately at one point you have to enter the major rectum to reach the rectal wall before stapling so if you are uh, technically adept then you can go through what the literature says i also go through major rectum but yes i have found in some obese patients there is a really thick major rectum mm -hmm. and once you uh, go around you find very uh, little space but it has never hindered the pouch to uh, go through and reach the pelvis but i think uh, there would be a, that is my feeling i am not analyzed but i think the chance of pelvic collection would be more in these patients so adequate drainage as 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 has been recommended that adequate drainage of the pouch is very essential uh, of the peri of the pelvis is very essential there is one other... small point i wanted to uh, bring yeah. it is yeah. uh, i mean it is uh, quite rightly pointed out by you dr kapoor dr das that uh, you are coring out the colon as so to speak in the emergency situation and uh, trying to uh, uh, core out leaving uh, don't uh, target the central vessels uh, there is uh, another technique which is uh, uh, evolved basically in patients who in whom you uh, you are able to predict that the ultimate pouch construction and the pouch reach to the uh, the dead super superior part of the dented line will be difficult at a later date when the pa patient comes for the restorative uh, surgery and these are tall uh, patients tall obese male patients where you anticipate difficulty so here it is recommended that if you can preserve the uh, marginal artery of drummond on the right side which communicates between the middle colic and the iliocolic trunk if you can preserve the marginal artery of drummond that means you are just targeting the vesa recta uh, along the uh, marginal artery of drummond preserving this thing this can can be a collateral circulation which can be used to you know increase the reach of pouch when you are in difficulty by you know you can take away the segment of iliocolic artery and the entire supply will come from the marginal artery of drummond that gives you at least 5 uh, cm of extra reach to the lower part of the floor so this is just one technique which can be used in the elective setting another thing i just wanted uh, like the modified two stage as uh, dr has said i think i would still be wary of doing a, a pouch channel and osmosis without an ileostomy although uh, if the patient is off uh, the steroids and uh, these uh, immunosuppressants probably it may be possible but uh, literature is showing that probably that uh, is acceptable and the results are better but i would still be very uncomfortable doing it uh, without an ileostomy you agree to that that it should be in selective patients but if That's you see right. cleveland clinic experience they sure. always do modified second right okay. so uh, i think uh, the biology is important